Hello, you hear me? Yep, I can hear you fine. All right, so hold on, let me. I see. Let me turn down your volume. All right, so uh, what's your account name? Smitten Kitten. S M I T T E N K I T T E N. Diamond four, diamond five. Yep. Whatever that is. There's no more diamond five. There's no more five for now, right? Did they change mm -hmm, that? There's no more five. All right. All right, so I'm a screen share. All right, what game do you want me to go over? You got a lot of normals in here. Yeah, because I haven't really had time to play. So I, I got home today after work and then I played a couple. Uh, I just really played loud. bad that Alistar game, but we can go over it. Cause I don't know how to play Alistar at all. Well, what's it, what do you mean? Like, I was like, I was playing against Braum Lucian. And Braum Lucian's a really strong lane, right? Yeah, I... but I'll, I'll start with that. Oh, what what position do you mean? A support. Oh, you do? Okay. That's easy. And so then. I don't know melee supports very well, other than Leona. And so I've been trying to learn Alistar, but I don't think I'm doing anything right. I get the combos wrong, and then I just don't know what to do Kaisa, as Alistar. a melee support against, like, I don't know. Lucian Braum seems strong, I guess. Yeah, Lucian Bomb's strong, but you can win that. Uh, let me, mm. we, can, we can look at that. Melee supports are easy, because every melee support has power spike timings and stuff like that. And basically, you just literally do nothing until then. And then you go roam. Okay, well, in the beginning of this game, I miss autoing a minion, and then I accidentally miss my Q, and then I make Kaiza burn, my, burn her heal. <laughs> you miss an auto? <laughs> I just, I walked forward a little too far, let's say, and I couldn't auto the minion. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, this Alistair game is kind of a joke, but we can go over it anyway. Well, here I'll kind of so basically like the way I coach is um, most people when they think of coaching they think of like teaching where mm -hmm. I'm gonna just give you like information and you're just gonna use that to like win. That's some, that's some of what I do, but, like, my main philosophy on coaching is that I want to, like, give you the tools and, like, give you a way of thinking so that you can, like, learn on your own in the future. That makes okay. sense. Okay. So, uh, pretty much, like, so, obviously, when you get into the game, you want to be able to uh, look at, like, all the different lane matchups. And you kind of, like, need uh -huh. to un you need to understand, like, what your role in the game is, too. Like... What like what the aggressive like what do you think the aggressive lanes in this game are for your team and what do you think the in the the other teams lanes like what do you think uh, they're trying to accomplish? Fior is an aggressive lane. Yeah. I don't know about the other matchups. I don't know how Liz Vlad works. Well, pretty much like your lanes that are playmakers are your mid and top, so those are your focal points, mm -hmm. and then they literally can't do anything top. They, and the mid is like whatever, but mm -hmm. like yours like. Is their aggressive lane so if they want to like progress the game they have to progress it through your lane so mm -hmm. when you go into the game like you need to have that mentality of like they're coming after me and like my job is to hang in if that makes sense so like mm -hmm. you need to go into every game with like a game plan by looking at like all the different lanes and like kind of thinking about like what like what is my job in this team comp mm -hmm. all right do you know about jungling yeah kind of do you know about like the pat pathing stuff i, I noticed most uh, people in like low diamond don't don't ward. Uh, I don't really know pathing much as like jungle just, just like moves based on like lane priority, like whether mid has priority or not, then they like invade or grab scuttle, etc. Okay. I don't really know pathing at all. Okay, so a big thing with support in laning too is like something that can drastically improve you as a as a, any any lane or like whatever position you play is like understanding the jungler and what they're trying to do and what you need to help them. So. 90% of junglers start red on top side and red on this side. They might not do it in this elo because people are kind of dumb, but any good jungler will always do red and then you'll do red. And then what will happen is, is if this jungler from this position thinks he can fight this jungler for a scuttle, then like he'll meet him. So what people do is the jungler always wards this and then either one of the bot lane people or mid lane, oh, you, you need to like get in the habit of warding this. And what this, what this information does is basically every jungler's path is either red or doubles 
are redder raptors. And then what happens is, is they see somebody going across one of these wards and they make the decision of, do I want to like fight that person for the scuttle? Like, let's say that like he's finishing raptors or finishing doubles and he sees like Trundle like went up here and just tried to like go straight for the scuttle. If I'm Graves, I'm going to fight the, the Trundle because I win, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I'm, this is kind of like outside of your lane, but this will help your lane is understanding this, okay? No, so, I think it's really important. I feel like support needs to know what everyone's doing. Well, not, well, this is every lane. Like, every lane... The, the, the number one way that people drastically improve in League is they need, to think, they need to think about how the jungle works. Because once you understand how the jungle works, you can understand, like, when your timings are for, like, how you can play your lane, like, how you can push out, like, how you can trade. You can, like, collapse on people. You can know, like, when you can roam. Like, once you understand the jungle, like, you're, you're, you're learning, like, the other half of the game, if that makes sense. So, so that's why all you really need to take away from this is that your jungler should be warding this, and if he doesn't, and you're the support, ward this, and this will like okay. this will do a world of difference because. Wait, ward it early? Can, like what time? Uh, you can do it at fifty-five seconds or at a minute like ten or something. That does any any of that time is fine because the main information you're trying to get out of this is that thing where I told you where he's either gonna do red doubles or red raptors, or he's gonna do red and cut all the way down here, and. This is going to give you the information of that. So let's say you're playing bot lane, and let's say you pulled for this guy. You're going to get to, to know if you can, like, push out hard. So let's say your jungler did his job and he warded this, and you see him, like, go and walk, and he wards and walks across this ward. Now you know you can, like, trade and do whatever you want in the lane, right? Mm-hmm, because he's top side. Yep. And it also just, like, helps your mid, like, play the lane. Like, if you have double wards on both sides, your mid can play the matchup, like, as aggressive as he wants. It just oh. it, it just completely changes the way that, like, every lane can play the game. I see. Oh, dang. Lust Boy says pro tip, pick Brom Tom if you want to win. Lust Boy's noob, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Alistar can beat, can, can beat uh, Brom. Also, yeah, Lucian. Well, Lucian's the most broken champion in the game right now. So. Yes, he is. Uh, I always ban him when I play support if, if we're not going to first pick him. So just keep that in mind, too. But yeah, so basically, like, now that I explained all that stuff, uh, can you, like, tell me what's going to probably happen this game? Tell me, like, the first three levels of this game in, as far as the jungler. Uh, for, uh, for both I sides. Make my, uh, I make my Kai'Sa burn her heal early, so... We no, 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 I don't know what happens in the game. Oh, like, what I should do? No, I want to know what each of the junglers are doing in the first three levels of the game. Like, I, what I want you to... Like, what I'm trying to teach you right now is the jungle, and then we'll get to your lane phase, okay? Oh. So, so, like... What is your trundle going to be doing for his like first three levels, and what is your graves going to be doing for, for his first three levels? Like, what's his path? Red raptors, and then graves is probably going to start. Actually, I don't know where graves started. Red, I, like, I guess they will start their red. Yep, and then where will graves go after red? Uh, probably scuttle. Which scuttle? Actually, I don't know which scuttle. Well, Top scuttle. Who, who wins one v one, graves or trundle? Trund. Graves. Yeah, Graves definitely wins. Graves. So what lane are they trying to play to? What's their strong lane? Uh, I have no idea. So remember looking at the team comps. Think about Malphite versus Fiora, Vlad versus this, and Lucian Brown versus your lane. Which is, which is the lane that's their strong lane they want to play through? Uh, mid, bot? Or... Yep, yep, mid and bottom. Or... Mm -hmm. So getting Scuttle secures vision and it puts your jungler on that side of the map early. So what is Gray's path gonna be? Red Scuttle his blue pink bot. I don't know. Bot bot scuttle. Yep. So he'll do red and then he'll either do Raptors or he'll go directly down to bot scuttle and secure that scuttle because he doesn't want this guy to get the scuttle. So what that does is that forces Trundle away from their strong lane because he win mm -hmm. he wins the one v one. Mm -hmm. So do you understand like why this stuff is so important? Because you can know exactly like where people are gonna go, and then yeah. what happens is is what when you walk into the lane level one, you can set your lane up like perfectly to adjust for that. Mm -hmm. So like let's say you know the Graves is gonna come down here like level two, and they have Lucy and Brom. So what are you gonna be trying to do with your lane? If Graves is bot side. Well, you know he's gonna be bottom, right? Yeah. Then I just play passive. Yep, exactly. And then, do you understand? Do you know the Alistar, uh, how Alistar matchups work? How like when you should no, be trained? No, I, I genuinely don't know how to play the champion. Okay, all. so basically, Alistar is a useless piece of shit until level three. He literally does nothing. Like, oh okay. Yeah, you just kind of like wander around in circles and like spam your lap and stuff. To heal. 
Yeah, you just don't really do anything. Um, you can use like a WQ if like they're near your turret or something, but you generally mm -hmm. don't don't want to do anything because the only way you win trades is if like you get your WQ and E all off on the person. You need like that full chain of of CC, and you oh, also probably nice. until you like learn your trading windows, you probably shouldn't do that that much unless your jungler is on your side of the map. Okay. That that makes sense. So like yeah, that makes sense. The number one mistake people make with Alisar is they trade before three. And then they fuck their lane up, and then they're just behind all game and they can't okay, trade. That's exactly what I did this game. <laughs> Alright, let's see it. Yeah, yeah, definitely shouldn't be. Definitely shouldn't be walking up to the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So regardless of like this happening, so this graves is like bad. But if you were to go like based on our predictions of before, like you guys should, you should basically just use your target at like the last second on these minions. Also, by the way, something to keep in mind is generally you should save. So there's two ways you can use Targans. You can use it the way we're using maximum gold efficiency, where you Targans one of the minions and then sit back and then wait, just like wait to last hit the second wave. Mm -hmm. Or you can save your Targans for the second wave and use both Targan stacks on both of the melee minions as they come in. Because if, the problem is if you use both Targans on this, you end up like putting the wave like right here because you're fast pushing it. Oh, oh, I never thought about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you can't like let's say the the wave is here and you get the level too early, you're not in a position to like capitalize on it because they're under their turret, right? Uh huh. So like, what you want to do is you want to like let them kind of get like the fake push, so the wave will push here, and then like mm -hmm. then you use the targets on the second wave, and then like the wave will be like stuck here because they pushed it, like you like baited them, and then now you have your level two power spike, and there's like this huge like range where they can like go on you. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then just basically you should just be like hanging back and not doing anything to level Chilling? three. Okay. Yeah. Like you just like stand in front near Brahm and like stand near your Kaisa. So you see how like Graves did kind of the stuff I talked about was bad because this is our this is your team's strong side and he invaded mm -hmm. and contested Scuttle on his not strong side, and he ended up like losing pretty much dying because of it. Mm -hmm. So you see how like important those like little details are. But so if you like a smart jungler wouldn't do that. So as you like move up in Elo, like you can predict where every single person's gonna go on the map. Mm. So pretty much like your goal now, especially since we'll look at that trade. So basically, let's say, um, so you hit level three, right? Yeah. So you can look for combos when they're stacked or when they're, he's trying to last hit a cannon. So like, right, so like right there, you don't want to use it because they're not stacked. Cause what'll happen is, is every time he'll put up the shield and then you lose the trade. See? Oh, oh like stack as in Braum and Lucian or stack. Yeah. You want to get both of them in the combo and then, um, Another thing you can do is you can kind of stand near Braum, like walk with him like halfway, and you can press E and then start charging it. And then like once it gets to like three oh. stacks, you, uh -huh. you combo the Lucian and then auto him right after and you'll get like all the stuns on him like right away. And then you just walk away. And that's like a, that's a, a damage trade. I, I, I kept wondering how do I, how do I use my E because it like never stacks in time. Yeah. My w, I can use it. Yeah. Well, you can only do that against melee support, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, this gray's not very good. 
Alright, we'll see what you do after you buy. I think I go straight back to lane. You should buy Mobies here in pink ward. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and then what you should do is you should just run middle to here and pink this. And then, uh -huh. or put it like really deep in the jungle somewhere, like here or here. And then basically, like, anytime, like, you can get better at this, but like, one of Alistar's biggest strengths is he's like, he's a roaming, he's like such a strong roamer. So, like, you guys are never going to win this lane 2v2. Yeah. So, basically, like, what you can do is when you get the waves, like, pushed up to here and crashed, you can look for roam window. Or, during, like, a timing like this, where you're coming out of base, because mm -hmm. basically you're not going to be able to catch these minions. And this guy's farming safely, right? Mm -hmm. So, on base timings, like, what you should do is get in the habit of is look in this area and look at mid situation and be like... Mm -hmm. Can I do anything mid? Like, what is the jungler trying to do? And if they really can't do anything, you can just get Bobies and run here and pink this. So you could have pretty much it, what it does. It gives Lissandra a pathway to walk down here. And if these guys are like pushed up like this, he's level six. Mm -hmm. He just comes down there and like double kills them. And mm -hmm. basically, you're helping his lane to help your lane. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Yeah. Because what you're gonna do is you're probably just gonna put your pink here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, do I put my pink there? I might put it in lane here. Oh, no. I mean, I mean that's fine. Like th what you're doing, what you did is not bad. But I'm just saying, like, think about these type of opportunities in the future. Because basically, yeah, it's kind of like how what just happened there is they have priorities, so they just insta clear your pink, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is pretty much Kai Salastar versus Lucian Brown. <laughs> you can, yeah. But that's what I'm saying, is like, you can't win the lane, so you need to think... A lot of people are like, oh, I'm a support, and it's like hard to climb, right? Because you, what happens is they get stuck in these positions, right? Like, you need to figure out ways of, like, influencing the map while, like, not actually winning the lane, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Yeah. I mean, you can win this lane if, like... Like, this is a fine combo. And then you should back off. Like, that's completely fine. You shouldn't use your ignite there, though. Oh. I die here. Oh, you do? Oh, you just shouldn't greed for the last auto. And yeah. I think it'd be fine. But even still, the, just be mindful of the thing we talked about before is that... So this guy has a Bilgewater Cutlass, so let's say you, you chunk him, right? He has he has lifesteal, so let's say you chunk him to 50% health, and Kai'Sa also gets chunked to 50% health. What's going to happen is the Graves is going to heal up the full off of his lifesteal, and then you're just naturally going to lose the lane through attrition. Mm-hmm. So like that's why those types of trades are not good. So like think okay. basically think about lifesteal versus no lifesteal. And then uh, also the same thing, like think about your role in the team. Like your jungler's killing it, your top laner's killing it. Like what happens a lot is like melee people, they feel like they need to do something, you know? Uh, cause... Yeah, that's that's constantly how I felt actually this game. I felt like I needed to do something. Yeah, but literally sometimes you just don't have to do anything. And then all you have to do is show up for team fights. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so this good roam. Think about if you had Mobies though, you would have been there even earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize. I, I guess like early playing Mobies is really important. Just on like roaming champions. Mm -hmm. Mobies are just OP. On like, if you're gonna stay in lane, then yeah, but. This is fine. Hmm. I'll coach you, Nota. <laughs> That's good. You guys get dragon. You guys win this game? No, we we terribly lost. Oh, because of this? Oh god. Oh, because Lissandra is not. Yeah, we huh. get a or we lose everything right here. 
Yeah, this will do it. So what prompted you guys to start this dragon? I don't even remember. I thought the dragon was like a little random, but... I would just like backping him here, to be honest. Like this dragon, uh. this dragon's just bad. Like basically what... So to put it in a better perspective, so what you guys did is you guys pushed them out, right? Mm -hmm. So then you guys got to you get to get to the wave first, right? So if you guys get to this wave and push it first, and also you should take a dematerializer on uh, Alistar. So you basically Alistar? yeah, you'll just instantly kill this cannon. So you'll push this wave super fast, and then mm -hmm. let's say they're like stuck here, then you can go start the dragon if you want. Like you need to make them make a choice of do am I gonna give up this like cannon wave and all this golden experience, or like am I gonna go wander over here and try to stop them? You know what I mean? Because now it's like, let's say they fight you, they're not losing anything, you know? Yeah, we lose our wave. We lose. Yeah, pretty much you guys lose the game right here. That's, yeah. that's literally game over right there. Yeah. And the shutdown, too. Sunday! Sunday! Yeah. Oh, and this guy dies, too. Yeah, you guys literally lost the game right there. Mm -hmm. But even like as a support, like understanding those types of situations and being able to like back ping or ping people is like, like call people, um... yeah, like that's like the world of difference, you know? Because you you have the least responsibilities as far as like mechanics on the on the map, mm -hmm. so it's up to you and the jungler to like read the map properly, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, that's pretty much all I need to see for this game. This one? You want to watch yeah. the next one? Yeah. So what did you learn from this game? You should write write down three things that like I want you to take away. And Okay. So what are the three main things that I probably want you to take away from this? Oh, oops. So pretty much like learning in, in League and like anything in life is about mm -hmm. repetition. And just like... Con so like I, when I'm trying to learn in a game or something, I always put up a notepad. And then, like, the little sticky notes. Do you have that? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So then I just pretty much, like, I'll write down, like, three things I want to work on for the day. And then I'll... Mm. Like, literally every time I load into a solo queue game, I'll, like, do a mental checklist of it. I'm like, all right, I'm going to think about where the junglers start. I'm going to think about how their team comp works. I'm going to think about, like, think about how my, like, lane plays. And, like, it's, you're going down that mental checklist as you go through the game. And then eventually it just becomes ha habit. And then... You can move on to the next thing once, like, it, it, that becomes automated. So, what are the three things that you need to take away from this game? I guess I think, like, uh, first, like, maybe like two minutes of the game with like jungle tracking. Like, I never ever think about where the jungler might be after he starts his first buff. Uh huh. And how how are the, how are the ways? What is the wording thing? What time should you word this? Uh, fifty-five or a minute. Uh... And then yeah, I just keep track of the. They're called pixel brushes, right? Yep. You don't yeah. usually in high elo. It's the jungler and the mid laner that wards this. But if you notice mm -hmm. this isn't warded, it's just a good habit I to ward just it. Ward it. Or if you're red side, um, you can just ward here, and, like where it'll see like the scuttle wandering over. Because the thing you need to watch out on oh. on red side is, you remember how I said this guy will do red and doubles? He can like level two gank you, you know, and you'll get, they'll just like come and fuck your world up. So in red side, it's really important to have this ward instead. Mm. Okay, so think about warding, like write that down and where the jungler is going to go. And... Ward pixel slash river is red side. Alright, what's the next thing? Uh, Alistar's useless pre 3. Yep, <laughs> that's definitely true. What kind of combos do you want to look for? Uh, start with E and make sure my Q and my E will follow up together so I can change. Well, these. no, that's only for melees. But like, what the oh. pri there's a pri like the primary thing you want to look out for is that they're stacked. If they stack oh, on yes. each other, then you combo. Yes, that they're stacked. Yep, and then you do your trade and then you walk away. Mhm. Mm okay, and then what's the the third thing? Buy Moby's early look for room timing. Yep, and what do you? So what's the point of getting the Moby's? So I could put pressure on the map elsewhere when I am literally not gonna get anything from walking bot. Yeah, and like what does this pink ward do? Uh, keeps track of jungler, opens my mid laner up, and my jungler up. 
Yep. Or so they the when when they do push on you, they can roam mm -hmm. down, and you can call that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like, if there's three things you would take away from the, the game. Take away those three things as a support, and mm -hmm. like I guarantee you, that's like you'll at least you'll move up below just because of those. Okay. All right. Let's look at one more game. Okay. We can look at the bard game. Don't play bard. That champions. <laughs> that's trolling champion it's so fun though i know he's fun and then i i play that champion and i run around and i just feed my ass off look at this you don't even have your support item completed <laughs> it's like that's bard that's that's bard in a nutshell right there <laughs> i don't have any any rig games uh, we can look at a recon game how about that okay that's fine oh wait i can't even watch that oh yeah uh Wait. Wait, just watch the bar game. Come on, just watch the bar game. And we can watch the Caitlyn game, honestly. I suck at AD, so I'd love to learn AD. Uh, okay. I can explain AD. But in that Caitlyn game, I'm against uh, Yasuo Nami. Well, first off, if you're gonna play AD, don't play Caitlyn. Play like really? Lucian, Ezreal, Kai'Sa. Just stick to those. Or you can play Jin too, but Caitlyn just sucks. Because if you die one time or you make one mistake, you just get you just get shit on, like the entire game. So like in order to play Caitlyn, you have to be really good at ADC. Mm. All right, so same things apply this game as we talked about last game. So even as ADC, you want to make sure that this is warded. Granted, this Rengar did a really weird path. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Look at, let's look at these. Damn, these are really weird team comps. So if I was going to look at these team comps, like, what do you think are their lanes of pressure? And, like, how do you think each... Uh, the Aatrox and Bot, I guess. Yep. Oh, well, actually, all three, all three of their lanes are pressure lanes. Uh, oh, really? Echo, too? Uh, I mean, he'll just push. This lane is yeah. irrelevant, but bottom and top for sure. And then what are your guys' pressure lanes? Uh, I guess same, Bot and top. No, this guy is he's a zero, he's just scaling. So you guys oh, you guys you guys are the pressure lane. Like you oh. and Lissandra. So you guys are actually the most pressure lane in the whole game. So the most of the action is gonna be around your lane. Mm. So yeah. But so regardless you guys should ward this. Really weird that Leeson starts blue. Like nobody will ever do that in a real game. Mm -hmm. So pretty much like that's why I said you need to ward this, because in order to play this matchup, you need to be able to push them in and harass them. So So when you do your autos uh, as an ADC, you want to try to trade away from the menu wave. Oh, uh, yeah. So like, I get harassed. so like here, you see how when you auto them, you're next to the melees. So immediately these melees are going to aggro you, and they're going to hit you like mm -hmm. five, or, yeah, they're going to hit you a bunch of times. So whatever auto damage you put on him is not going to be as much. So where do you think you should be standing in the lane to like, you'd be like over here, right? Near my caster? Oh, away. Oh, okay. You do want to be away from the minions, because if you're here, then like, you're, basically what's gonna happen is you're just gonna pull the wave in or you can be over you over here and then like pull them into the bush and like duck in and out to like drop drop the aggro like those are the ways you can do it but you should never be like standing in the minion wave to to do the damage because like what skill shots do they have that they're gonna try to throw at you you know uh, nami q or w oh right now nami w and yasuo q but none of those are like blocked by minions so you can yeah, you can base if you're against the ezreal or something you should be like trading in the minion wave but since you're not mm -hmm. like you can be out here and basically, you would have this warded, so you'd be good to go. So, like, even though you traded them and harassed them, you guys actually ended up losing out on health in that situation. Yeah, so, kind of explain that again also is, like, because you weren't able to properly push them out of this situation, like, they were actually able to push the wave on you. But you guys should be the ones like pushing the wave on them. So like you'd be over here, you just like hitting him, walking away, like hitting him, walking away. And this would yeah. this would and this would like push him away from the minions. And also when you're harassing, think about the times you want to do auto harasses, you don't want to just like randomly harass like this. You wanna wait till like your minions get low health. So you basically what happens is he has to make the the decision. decision. Yeah. 
and then like he'll end up trying to last hit or, or to try to put like fight on you. So it'd basically be like when he's like killing like these type of minions, you know? What a wonderful hook. Not too bad, like they're low. That's good. Look at that, what a Caitlyn genius, wow. Yeah, BF sword. That yeah, pink quest, good. So, this is kind of like Yasuo specific, but you generally don't want to trade him near the melee or near the minions because mm -hmm. anytime you're standing near these minions, he can E through the minion to get to you, right? And then here too, like, your Thresh is clearing a ward, and you're walking up to, to trade him. So you should wait till your Thresh comes back from clearing the ward, and then you can look to trade him again, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys basically, like, lose your lane off of this. Yeah. Might not a challenger. Do you know about back timings? Like which Not waves you should back on? So generally, like, you should back on cannon waves just because of. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. How much money did you back with? Uh, especially on champi champions like Caitlyn, you should, uh, you should always get, um, boots on these base timings just because like you're trying to like throw the auto out and then keep distance you know what i mean mm. like boots are super valuable like a lot of people rush zerkers like if you can't get bf sword then some people will even rush zerkers like first item that's like pretty common so Same thing, you're, you're inside the minion wave, and he doesn't have his W too. Especially when this guy has his Q wound up, you can't walk up to the wave at all. But that's just like matchup specific stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like when you're playing your lane, like try to think about what their champion needs to do to... You've probably never played Yasuo, right? Mm -hmm. Never. Oh, well basically... Um... Okay, basically Yasuo, uh, he needs to dash through minions to like do damage to you. So like if you're away from the minions, or if he doesn't have this like wound up thing, then he's not gonna be able to like to fuck with you. That's like match specific stuff. I don't know. Attack move. So landing in general is like pretty easy for most people for ADC. I think it's just like trying not to die. I kind of want to look at what you do after the turrets go down, because that's where most ADCs make a mistake. Okay, 
Okay, so you went mid. You go mid, that's where you're supposed to go. So do you know about like priority and all that type of stuff? A little bit. So you know, priority means basically you have push, right? Yeah, you have push, you have first throw. Okay, so... Um, yeah, this is weird. Okay, basically, like, so the way that uh, you should think about in ADC is like, or whenever you go into this mid situation, you need to think about if you can get priority or not, and then like what you can do with that priority on the map. So let's say hypothetically you and Thresh were able to get this priority and like push this turret in. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you? What are your objectives to like do once you get that? Like, let's say you were to get this turret down and it's like the next phase of the game. Like, what would you be trying to do on the map? get vision or go for objectives, I guess. Yeah, so you want to, I mean, less so as the ADC, but... Oh, yeah. It's more like, you, a lot of ADCs just, like, need to kind of get led around by their team, but you can, like, ping where you want to go, you know? Like, ping, pinging is actually, like, super underrated. Is this guy going to do that? What the... The Kate, Caitlyn games are the... Are these low elo games are just like a rams. Yeah. This is like, I'm like, let's talk about some strategy. They're <laughs> just people running it down against each other. Yeah. I feel like AD is even harder to make plays in low elo than it is with. Well, that's also why I kind of explained, like, the ADCs you want to play are Ezreal, Lucian, and Kai'Sa. Ezreal, and you need to think about each of their three strengths. Like, Lucian can go side lane and, like, push people out, and he can win lane really hard. Lucian can also, like, E into people and ult and push them out and kill them in mid. And then, same thing with Kai'Sa. Like, Kai'Sa has kill pressure. If she knows it's 2v2 and she has a W on them, like, she can run somebody down. And Ezreal gets, like, permanent priority because he can just basically walk up in the lane like an idiot and throw Qs. But let's say, like, Caitlyn, yeah. bless you. Let's say, like, Caitlyn, like, you, you're kind of, like, helpless. Like, you can't really put, if you, like, auto this Dami at this point on these items, it really doesn't, it, like, doesn't do it. There's no, like, kill threat, you know what I mean? It's not like you can, like, go. Yeah, there isn't. yeah, so that's why the ADC champions you play are very important by, like, what you can actually do. Uh, otherwise, like, you kind of just have to wait till you hit enough items where your autos really can, like, mess with people. But mm -hmm. the... That's not until you have like Storm Razor and Rapid Fire and IE, you know? That's like so far into the future. That's why a lot of people feel like they can't have an impact when they play ADC. And they get stuck in these situations where they're just sitting here in these like ARAMs mid and you're basically just waiting to get your items, you know? Mm Good. You guys got two turrets. Yeah, I don't think you guys should. Have, yeah, I don't think you guys should have gone for the second turret. Yeah. So you. Lost Inferno, I yeah. So do you understand uh, tempo? Mhm. Mm so yeah, basically, like, if you get this turret, think about like the, the amount of time it's gonna take you to get back on the map from. Yeah, to recall and to come back. Yeah, and so and also you guys are really low too, so mm -hmm. you can like win or lose games based on understanding tempo and making calls on like Baron and Dragon and things like that. So. Trying to understand and grasp those kind of concepts are pretty important to learn as well for macro. And then you guys, there's Infernal. Yeah, ADC is kind of like a difficult. Stole Infernal. Oh, wow. Okay, well. Yeah, great shot calling. 
But so, yeah, ADC is a little bit harder to teach just because, like, it's a very mechanical position, and you have to, like, basically play... Uh, you have to play, like, these mid-priority situations really well and, like, make calls based on those mid-priority situations. Mm -hmm. And you should never, ever go up top to this guy. You, only only Lissandra should go here. Oh, okay. Because, uh, basically, like, you can't push out past here. Uh-huh. But Lissandra can. So, like... Uh, so, like, you want to get as big a time window as you can. So, kind of see how, like, she was going top to go... Because that's where she needs to go. So, like, understanding what lane you need to go to is very important. So, generally, like, most of the time ADCs will go mid. You can catch some of these waves, but... Think about the amount of time it takes you to, like, go all the way back down here and get back out on the map and, like, push this out and, like... That, that's like 40 seconds of downtime, you know? Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah. That's that's pretty much for, for the ADC game. Like, you don't really put main ADC. I just wanted to kind of like mm -hmm. explain the perspective. Since you, understanding ADC is kind of important for understanding support. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Alright. Um, hmm. Then we can look at the bar again. I don't know. Well, like, uh, I'll look at the beginning of the Bard game, because I don't want to, like, overload you with information, but mm -hmm. I just want you to, like, have a few takeaways, and then just, like, every time you actually want to, like, play League and and improve and grind and all that stuff, let's try to, like, work on those key things, and then, you know, you come back and you get, like, a new, a new, a new thing you're trying to learn. Like, learning something should be, like, piece by piece, you know? True. What do you do for work, by the way? Oh, I recently started to work at a startup company, but I'm not sure how much we can disclose. But it's nothing in like esports or anything. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, same thing. This game, obviously, like people didn't ward properly, but uh, yep. so, huh? Whoever warded this, is like. Pretty much same thing. So you're red side. So where do you want to ward in this game? Uh, either river. Which part? Or... Which part in the river? I guess. Yeah. You won't ward here every time yeah. because, especially because they have Camille, and Camille's always want to do red into level two gank. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of want, and you also want to be able to push because you have double range versus melee. So double range should always push melee. It's just pretty much like if they have one range and they have one melee. And you have two range, you should always be able to push them in. So think, just think about that for like lane, lane matchups. Could you repeat that? So basically, like they have melee. This is a melee guy, Alistar. And oh, they have range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have two range, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you walk up to this menu wave. You can both just sit here and like hit the wave, right? Yep. So you can push faster no matter what. And if Alistar wants to push the wave, he's just going to be sitting there getting railed on, right? Mm hmm. So you get to do whatever you want with the wave. You can pull it. You can push the wave. Like you can do literally anything you want with the wave, and you can do that based on like what your jungler is going to be doing. Or like in this situation, you can't push because they have a Camille. Camille will level two gank you, and that's why like this board over here is like so important. It's really important. Yeah. So like that's why it's really important to think about like what their jungler wants to do and how he's going to play the map. So like if they didn't have a Camille, they had something that can't level two gank that well, like a, like an Evelyn or something weird like that then you could probably push the wave really hard and just try to harass them under turret. Or like push for fast level two. So mm -hmm. that's why that's why I always bring up jungle when talking about bot lane is because bot lane is really dictated by those first three waves because that, se that sets you up for like the long con kind of like uh, making them miss CS so they don't hit like BF item timings and like chunking them out, um, you know, and just like keeping them in lane like that. Like those little details are like how you actually snowball bot lane. But yeah, Camille ends up gank. When you see her mid, now you know you can push hard and you can trade. So like every time this Alistar walks up like this, you should be you should like auto him once or like Q and then like walk back. Yeah, so let's say you had that original word from here. Who would have seen this guy, but... 
Oh. Oh, he has end up killing Alistar. So, what mistake did Alistar make? He initiated and we weren't stopped. That, well that too, but what level is he? He's two. <laughs> yeah. Nalsar should never combo when he's not level three. Like this guy's kind of low, and maybe if he gets the combo perfectly and ignites, but you guys have heals, so it'd have to be really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, pretty much, if he flash combos, flash WQs here, that could work and ignite and maybe kill. But and then this guy could flash mm -hmm. and kill. But like, like if a good player would actually just flash on you and combo here. I don't even know how you got so chunk, but yeah. But then he goes on you guys when you're not stacked, so he gets fucked. The level 2 Alistar! <laughs> oh, not too bad. Mm. Okay, so... How much gold do you have? A lot. So you have enough for Mobies, right? Should have recalled after Camille died, huh? Um. I forget why I stay. I was like trying to. It's just the wave was there, so I just, I decided to stay. But. I mean, you can stay and finish the cannon, but then you should base. Um. You can get all this experience, but then once the Lucian gets to the wave, then you can... Like, it's fine for you to stay here. Okay. I just thought the wave was too big, but I ha I'm, like, holding on to, like, 1,200. Yeah, no, that's fine. Like, and now you can... Because the thing is, is this wave right here, Lucian's not going to be in a position where you get ganked, right? Mm -hmm. And then the thing we talked about before where you're going to get Mobies, so he's going to end up getting solo experience while you're doing your Moby roam timing. Because um, he needs to catch up right now. He's behind you. Mm-hmm. Right? So basically you would get Mobies and you would just like run mid and then like pink one of these bushes or something so that pretty pretty much this one so that TF can the TF wants to to ult to the bottom, right? Like TF first casted in, TF will never win this lane. Right? So mm -hmm. same thing as like when you're bottom and you can't win bot lane. Is you need to mm -hmm. um you need to like Get open up the map so where you can help another lane since you can't win your lane. Yeah, I think my biggest problem with support is I never go anywhere else. Yeah, so like even going here, like yeah, the wave is here. So you would have been basically you would have just ran here with Moby super fast. You would be here like let's say that this jungler they they two v two, you would like just so happen to be here, right? And it's like you don't don't like, don't like try to force a gank or anything like that. Like the mistake most people make when they're learning this concept is they think that like I'm mid, I have to make a play, right? It's just getting in the habit of like, I got Mobies, I can get around. Here. Yeah, I'm gonna here, I'm gonna put a ward down. If something happens, I'm gonna be here and be involved, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's say that like this Camille mm -hmm. ganks this TF, which is definitely something that could happen. Mm -hmm. And he comes here and you stun that Camille and she dies, like you you win you win the game. Okay. So it's like you're trying you're like rolling you're like flipping a coin to see if like you win the game. Okay. And then after that you go back down to bottom, you have Mobies. Like you just like tunnel through this wall and you miss mm -hmm. like two CS, right? No harm, no foul. So it's like mm -hmm. You have a chance of winning the game over like two CS. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm playing. So for Bard and Alistar, I understand the roaming. What if I'm playing something like Lulu or Soraka? Do I do the same thing, or do I just stay? Uh, I mean, I don't really play those champions because <laughs> you. I mean, you can roam mid on those, but it's like it's like pointless, right? Well, like your impact is just like you can roam and like turn a gank like that it's possible but it's just like you're you're more about like laning and just playing for late game when you play those champions you know what i mean so just keep that in mind but oh, okay but like that's why when i when I, basically a lot of people complain about they can't carry as uh supports it's because they get the same thing as like when i said when you're playing caitlin right you're, you're locked into your lane and you can't affect the rest of the map right Mm -hmm. So when when you pick a champion, you want to pick something that can like affect the whole map, because sometimes you're not gonna be able to win your lane, like no matter how good you are. Uh, mm -hmm. So then that's when like you have to think about like what am I trying to do 
to like what can i do to win the win the game besides like trying to win my lane and it's just like these little details like this where let's say that you let's say that that lucian did die in this alistar combo to you and killed him right mm -hmm. then like you could get back into the game by plays like this so just like keep just keep that stuff in mind and the, the number one thing about these display is don't overforce it because i see so many support people when they start learning this is they just they'll just like flash in here and fucking kill themselves or something or like they'll try to gank and like <laughs> okay. the, the they'll like run straight into the jungler and kill themselves you know what i mean and then and then they just like make the game even worse and then you die and then you, you miss a save and you come back down to bot lane and it's like and then now you lose both lanes right mm -hmm. so like just understand that this is a coin flip don't force it Put the pink ward down and then go back to bottom. You got the Aether Wisp, let's go. It's like we've received any. Yeah, yeah. Same thing as the movies. Yeah. All right. So same thing here is like, so this wave is not gonna get crashed for a while. So this is another timing when you could, you basically you would just link up with this guy and just try to figure out what he wants to do. So another thing you can do when you come off these timings where your support is, where you're, so like here, especially since you're barred, I would just try to tunnel this guy through the wall and kill them. Like, you should just, like, beeline for this guy. Now, imagine you, like, go behind. Even if you get spotted on this ward and you just tunnel through here, like, these guys are fucking dead, right? So, the second res responsibility of, like, moving around the map as a support is syncing up with the jungler to make plays. Okay. So, like, even that earlier roam where the Camille was coming, Kled was there, too. So, it's, like, you're basically just trying to be, like, the dynamic duo and, like, have each other's back and shit. So, like, you could even tunnel him through here. Like, you could go running through here and tunnel him through here. So, like, think about how you guys can set up plays together. Like, and, okay. yeah, like, syncing up with the jungler is just OP, because you just get, like, gangbanged, you know? The TF. Well, this game's pretty much over. Yeah. So, what's the two takeaways you should? Uh, there should be two th two primary things you should take away from this game. What uh, are they? Get Moby's early roam a good time when I don't have any reason to be bought. I guess. Uh huh. I don't get much from bot. Uh huh. Uh, don't over exert when I do roam. Don't try to force a kill. Just try to grab vision. Just be there just in case something happens. Yep. And uh, sync up with jungler. Sync up with jungler, yeah. And then what is the, the range? Think about the range versus melee thing too. And like how yeah. you can play your lane. If I'm range, I basic. If I if we're too ranged against a melee support, we basically have full control over what we do with our wave. Yep. And then you can base that on. That's why I go back to the jungler thing. Because mm -hmm. the jungler thing lets you understand the, the range versus melee thing. Because then like mm -hmm. you can be like, okay, I know where this guy's going to go. And then, like, the word thing ties in that, too. They, they all tie in together. That's why, like, I always start with the jungle thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, especially if the enemy jungler is a level 2 ganker, it's really good to have a ward. It's, like, right here. Brush. Not, in, not in the brush. Like, put it, like, up here on the lip. So, because you want to see when the scuttle's, oh, like... see the full path. Well, you want to see, like, if he's doing the scuttle. So, uh... like, if the scuttle wanders down... Because the scuttle goes back and forth, right? So a lot of the time, the scuttle will just randomly wander over to this ward, and you'll be able to see if he took the scuttle or not. And you get to see if he ganks you on this position. So like, you generally want to ward like right here. Mm -hmm. That's like kind of important. So okay. yeah, just like basically put those that kind of stuff on your sticky note, and then mm -hmm. just do like a mental checklist of that every time you go into the game, and mm -hmm. then I guarantee you'll improve. Okay, that's good. All right, that's that's pretty much all I got.
Hope you learned something. I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck. You. you check back in and like let me know how you're doing. Like in like okay, a week okay. or two. All right. Thank you so much, Saint. No problem. Take it easy.